glass that followed that out to come in and lay hundreds of layers of steel flooring with cages in them that they put children in. When they special forces, a large, large group of special forces came in, they rescued 35,927 children from this facility. It was one of the primary Mark Ultra f- development facilities on Earth. Uh-huh. So thank God for our military, like Trump says and Q says, because that's a lot of children that you know would have been with, that were going through horrendous situation. It's just you know they're in these cages and lights and bells go off and they get electrocuted all the time and mistreated badly to you know turn them into Mark Ultra slave bots. Then in Darwin. Uh, four miles west of Darwin City, there's a dome. Then we have Deep Springs that's now under white hat control at 37 degrees, 22 minutes north, 117 degrees, 59.3 minutes west. That's uh, Then we have Fort Irwin, 35 degrees, 20 minutes north, 116 degrees, 8 minutes west. That was a detainment camp for renegade civilian ops after they were, they had Hillary got in, they rounded up all, all of humanity into these detainment camps that's what every time you see that that's what that means then under white hat control edwards air force base in the area where diamond creek and the south fork of the yuba meet then under uh still under black hat control george air force base under white hat control is hellendale that was the lockheed underground facility that was technology and secret projects development base los angeles is under white hat control on highway 14 towards edwards air force base after palm day unity this was for technology the illuminati secret projects this facility is near the the hot chup pie mountains reported it's reported that this goes 42 miles uh, excuse me 42 levels deep it is heavily involved with electronics and high-tech aerospace research mount shasta and many people that live in that area know how you see all kinds of stuff there all the time is a massive base it's for advanced space technology genetic experiments magnetic advances space and beam weaponry um, this is the deepest known facility. Um, it's over 800 in California. It's over 800 miles deep. Kern River facility, the hollowed out mountain next to the hydroelectric facility. It's a Kern River project near Bakersfield, California. The Napa Valley facility is now under white hat control. This is where they used to grab people that would go through the Napa Valley do mine sampling. They'd sign up and they'd see if they have relatives or people that missed them. They'd grab them and take them underground here. This was located the primary entrance of the Oakville grade north of Napa tunnels also connect with the wineries all throughout all of Napa Valley. It's used for white slavery and mine control as well as direct satellite communications, laser communications, a continuation of government site. Uh, in this case, we're talking continuation of the Illuminati government, in other words, the deep state. This was located on the Oakville grade in Napa County, and it's a total of 87 acres, this Napa Valley facility. Northern Air Force Base is now under white hat control. Next base, Quincy is at 39 degrees, 56.2 minutes north, 120 degrees, 56.5 west. Then near Palmdale, we have the Palmdale Boulevard. Uh, they call it Palmdale Base. It's the McDonnell Douglas facility called the Uano facility. And you can see it better with uh, from the Three Sisters Hills area to the south of the facility. It, this base is involved in high-tech aerospace technology. Then the Presidio, which is the massive system that goes under, that I was talking about earlier, that goes under all of San Francisco and out under the harbor to Oakland. That was a FEMA DOD site uh, for Region 9 of the regional office. This was neutralized with underground burnout, which caused fires to be seen all the way down to Porter Ranch. The San Bernardino base which is now under white hat control, was at 34 degrees, 50 minutes north, 34 degrees, 16 minutes west. Uh, I got north there again, I don't know why. Was under the entire San Bernardino Valley. It was neutralized with a tactical nuke, uh, causing two earthquakes at 4.5 and then 3.2. Again, aftershocks are not uh, normally like that. They're different. And you can see a lot of the dumps and facilities there on that map and all those interconnections. Yeah, so it may not be as much of San Andreas fault as it, as it, as it is uh, all these uh, wars going on down there, huh? Yes, sir.
and then Santa Barbara County is uh, dumb. It's in the thick di- diatomite strata, which is a diatomite is a very hard mineral. It's just slightly less hard than a diamond. So there, that one's going to take a little more effort to get into. That's still under the dark cats or the deep state. In Santa Rosa as well is under deep state. Still, it's at 38 degrees, 26.4 north, 122 degrees, 42.9 west. That's a female regional center for the west coast. What is being done here is mostly kept secret, but this base is listed as a communications antenna field, but it's obviously being used for much more. Then we have the Sierra Nevada Mountain Complex, which is a very deep military base in the Tehachap- uh, Tehachapi, I'm uh, probably not pronouncing that one right myself, ranch, and that's in the Tehachapi Canyon. It was, was finished in 19... Uh, 95 in september this is called the unholy six base then the trona complex is now white hat control that was at 35 degrees 45.5 north 117 degrees 22.6 west it's several miles northeast of trona and it's directly underneath argus peak this dump sits on uh on china lakes um land and is built was built in the 60s but it was neutralized along with china lake as well as the next one, which was part of that whole battle that they did under their the special forces and all of that, which is Benicia, that's now under White Hat control as well. Catalina Island Base, still under the dark side, Chocolate Mountains, Death Valley, which the entrance to the Death Valley system was in the uh, Panamint Mountain down on the lower edge of the range near the Wingate Pass, and it's it, it was at the the entrance was in the bottom of an abandoned mine shaft. Then there's a Lancaster base, which is used for aircraft design, anti-gravity engineering, stealth craft and testing, and it's 42 levels deep. The Lawrence Livermore International Lab Complex is used for human genome matching, mapping and making clones. They're work trying to resolve the differences that clones don't look exactly like humans. For example, the earlobes are attached where the human would have a free swinging earlobe. So they're looking at working on chromosome 19. This was a newly built lab that cost $1.2 billion. And it was uh, for the laser facility that they had there that had to do all of that technology and engineer all that. The Morono Valley complex, then there's the Mount Lassen complex, which is now under white hat control. The Needles Complex, the Palmdale Complex, new aircraft design, anti-gravity research was done there, or is being done there, excuse me. Um, this is in the process of being burned out. It's still part of the mop-up, so they're not. this one is not completely yet under white hat control. That's part of all that burnout that you see. And then the, the Teachapi facility north, uh, north of Tijon Ranch, which is 42 levels, the Ukiah facility, and then Coca Weef Peak, which was an old mining city, and they built a facility under the Coca Weef Peak, and that's now under White Hat control. Next, we go to Colorado, my home, <laughs> Alamosa. And I talked to somebody who was living out there, seeing all the black helicopters, all of this with the special forces. They cleaned that completely out. The Book Cliffs is still under Dark Hat control. The Boulder facility has been cleaned out. That's a headquarters for the EMC, in a type, which is a type of electromagnetic mind control system that was going to be used once we were all highly integrated with all the nanofibers and nanotech and smart dust that are putting in our vaccinations and our air and our water. So they would use that as well as for their mark ultra slaves. And as well through your our, your smartphones, your all your smart devices that would make us all into little bots for them. This is genetic. Uh, this whole uh, big huge facility was for genetics and geology mining, as well as related to to advancing technology for tunneling and underground construction. Under White Hat control. That's part of the huge facility that went, as we'll see, from DIA, Colorado Springs, NORAD, Cheyenne Mountain. Um, that was for the Canada, U.S., and FEMA. Hundreds of people are on staff. It's 4.5 cubic miles of underground caverns, 45 underground steel buildings. They had a uh, complex of tracks and satellites and missiles and submarine entrances and much, much more. 
this NORAD facility also controlled the Monarch uh, Mark Ultra Slave that had the end times programming, which is known as Alex Janus and Alexis uh, for callback when they were going to do with Hillary their nuclear war and then round up the renegade civilians and they would activate those bots to help take people out. That's part, They still have a, um, a lot of those bots. They've from what I've been told, six million have been taken out, or you know, got a hold of and taken the implants that they put in them out, and they're you know getting their personalities and their beingnesses put back together, and getting the demons that they put in charge of each personality once they do the torture and create those personalities. But there's still some. So you know, when we see the report coming out in maybe with the Durham around March, I would be ready because. You know, that's why if they have to do martial laws for these bots, they don't even know that they are. And then that NORAD facility was 1,287 miles of underground road. And that's all now completely under the Alliance control and completely cleaned up. Then there was the yeah. Fort Collins, which is still not completely done yet. Uh, that came up into the University of uh, Colorado State University at Fort Collins. And then the DIA Denver complex, which consists first off of five buildings they dug out and put in there before they laid down the swastika runways for DIA and the buildings. And then they had um, 70 floor. These two primary buildings have, are 70 floors high. The This facility goes, is, goes down eight cities literally un stacked on top of each other under Denver and the lowest city is 22 miles in diameter. So this is a massive facility. I've actually been on the train coming from, you know, flights and listened to, uh, you know, people talking, oh, you know, two stories, oh, don't get off at the, when we get to the main terminal, I got a special tour to go under the big stuff. So, you know, if you're paying attention, you can see that, and that, you know, all of that is connected and underneath there, and you can see it when you ride those trains. If you're paying attention, you can see the train tracks going off in different directions. And this facility was also for a concentration camp for separation of personnel on, when they would put in martial law in after the nuclear World War III. Three. And if you go around DIA and look, the barbed wire all around DIA is facing in, not keeping people out, it's keeping people in. That barbed wire faces in, not out. You can also see pipes and everything coming out of the ground. You can see that huge cigarette that continues up until they got this under control. You can see semis coming up and dumping dirt and then literally sink into that cigarette, come up facing the other way with materials to take out. There were two labs, uh, uh, destroyed by scientists that gave their life back in 2012, taking out a dead man switch that this lab laid right underneath Pena Boulevard. For those people that live in Colorado during that time, there was a 4.7 earthquake and Pena Boulevard was in excellent condition. They tore the whole thing up and then they re, you know, came in with trucks, removed all that debris. And then they completely rebuilt Pena Boulevard just like it was before they tore it up. I mean, there's no reason to tear up perfectly good access to the airport and then put it back the way you, you had it originally, unless there was something going on underneath it that you needed to clean up. And that was part of the maglev train system came in through there as well. So that connected DIA with Washington, D.C. So they really wanted that access. So they came in and those two scientists gave their life to keep the entire front range of Colorado from being wiped out by Kuru. So God bless them. And, you know, we honor their, their sacrifice. Mm -hmm. There are um, areas and areas of fenced in barbed wire, concrete stacks, and you can see many cooling towers all over the DIA complex, all over the runways. Pay attention when, if you ever fly in and out of there, you can see the entrances. The, um, this area is much larger. The DIA complex is much larger than the city that's on top, the Denver and its suburbs. And this was supposed, the reason is, and this is why Obama actually spent, when they thought there was an asteroid coming in, he flew to Denver and spent, he went underground there. This was for continuity of government for the deep state. And this is all for their transition system. You know, that goes all the way up under what is called the Federal Center, which is between 6th Avenue and Alameda. There's a nuclear reactor both there and under DIA to power this whole thing. Uh, it's the main hub 
for all the maglevs and the entire continent had hubbed out from Denver system. It has massive Mark Ultra facilities with Delta Orion in time programming teams there, as well as all these foreign troops that were put in there to flood out of that facility. They have 150 years of food storage and they had a large lake in there with parks and flora and fauna and animals and all of that stuff to make it look literally a beautiful seven star resort. Um, it was also part of the free energy Tesla grid system. This whole facility went a total of 88.3 miles deep. And you can see one of those entrances and that's literally right underneath the front pier runways there. If you look down on DIA, the, the runways are in a shape of a swastika and all over DIA is all kinds of demonic murals, gargoyles, all kinds of things out on the uh, facing the airport runways. There's a statue to Anubis and there's a plaque saying it's the New World Order Airport. Scary stuff. Then in the Grand Mesa, that's up, up above... Um, Grand Junction, that's completely under white hat control. Another person I knew was there and they saw the stuff going on in that clean out there as well as the Montrose base, which was north of Paradox in the Paradox Valley. Then the Creed, that's uh, reached through Old Mine shafts of the silver mines in creed and that actually goes out quite a ways then the delta facility under the uh san juan valley then falcon air force base that's used for satellite control the gore range which is near the lake west of denver library and the central data bank it's the central data bank for all of the new world order in the in this side of the world the San Juan Valley is completely a dumb underneath the entire San Juan Valley, all the way up underneath the gray sand dunes. And that's um, the entrance is hidden underneath a buffalo grazing ground and a crocodile farm. And then in Telluride, they have a base there where if you ski out of bounds, they figure you're fair game and they grab you from the skier. In Warden Valley, that which is west of Fort Collins is now under white hat control. The Montrose base also north of Paradox in the Paradox Valley as well, another base. And then in Connecticut, we you know, we go, there's just one base that's in somewhere in Northwest Connecticut. I haven't been able to vet out exactly where that is. In Florida, there was, after, um, this base should actually now be in italics, Rick. <laughs> that was taken under control during Hurricane Doria by SEAL Team uh, 9. Georgia, we have a three base facility that is interconnected. It's the, the regional center for that area of the country. It's in under Atlanta and it has um, New World Order re, uh, was redying the boundaries, as I said earlier. So that's the base for the entire area. It has three large underground facilities, which are composed of Kennesaw Mountain, Marietta, which is connected to Dobbs Air Force Base and the South Atlanta which is entered through Forest Park. Then there's the Thomasville base, which is at 30 degrees, 50.2 north, 83 degrees, 58.9 west. This is another FEMA regional camp center where they train um, groups in search and destroy missions, otherwise known as renegade civilian ops. So this is the primary facility for training the re renegade civilian ops. It's the regional center for the training of the ops as well as the, con the entire continental center. And then what I'm talking about here is the uh, when martial law was to come during, the, you know, after the end of all the nukes going off for World War Three with Hillary getting in, which was planned to do to happen within two months of her election. They were going to have a submarine launch nukes off the coast of Korea and the Soviet Union making it look like they launched and we'd have a nuclear war. These are United Nations International Security Forces, UNISF. And the UNMATF, which stands for United Nations Multinational Task Force, is located throughout dumps throughout the U.S. And I actually invaded a student of mine and I went into one of these ops in, you know, in Hawaii when they're training with all Vietnamese and, you know, asked them what they're doing up there on the goal. So this stuff is, you know, absolutely for real.
uh, scroll up there, Rick. Please, sir. Thank you. Um, Canada w uh, was going to also deploy their own forces. This stuff goes all the way up into Canada. The CIA red list and blue list. If you were to look in your mailbox, uh, you know, uh, before Hillary got in, you would see a little blue dot, blue dot or red dot. Sorry about that. It's my doggy girl. That would be in your post office box or your mailbox. And this would tell you red list means that just to wipe you out, uh, just, you know, they come and round people up. You're, you're, you know, not useful as a slave. They were just going to kill you and take you away. And a troop carriers would come. The blue list means you, you're trainable and salvageable as a nice little slave.